Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, welcome. My name is Monica, and today we're doing yet another edition of our bi-weekly wishlist or washout. I am sorry if you can hear the air conditioning running in the background. Uh, it's getting hotter and hotter, and I just needed to have it on for this morning, because this is going to be a bit of a longer video, because I've got quite a few things to go through. So I'll be filming for a bit, and my makeup's actually already starting to sweat off. I found the culprit for what is causing my makeup to sweat off and unfortunately it's a newer concealer I'm testing out and it just doesn't hold up with sweat and I need something that holds up with sweat because <laughs> I haven't even left my house yet <laughs> and it's already breaking down so anyway we've got lots to talk about lots that I'm actually really excited for uh, I, I honestly like I've already pre-ordered something we're gonna get into all of that uh, if the AC, if I'm editing this, hello editing Monica, if I'm editing this and it's too loud, I'll throw a music track down and do my best to work with it, but I just, I'll figure something else out, but I just need the AC on today. It's, it's hot. Jumping right into trend mood. So I'm going to talk about first, normally I like scroll down to trend mood and start where I left off last time. I'm starting at the top and working my way down. So the first thing I see is this new collaboration with KKW Beauty and Winnie Harlow. And Winnie Harlow is this beautiful model who has, I believe it's called Vitilio, Vitiglio, I can't pronounce shit. She is gorgeous though. And I'm really excited that she's gotten this kind of opportunity. This is awesome for her and her brand, so to speak. But I have no idea what it's going to be. <laughs> I would love to support this. Um, I've never actually bought anything from KKW before, so this could be my first purchase, but I have to see what it is. It can't, I, I don't want it to be boring like the rest of KKW, right? But on the other hand, there are some products from Kylie that I just wasn't expecting to love and just like, whoa, they like blew my mind. So maybe I should give KKW a chance. If you've ever bought anything from KKW, let me know down below, because I know one of my favorite YouTubers, uh, the Tayla, she actually loves the KKW like concealer, and I think the under eye setting powder too. I haven't tried that out. Uh, I do love the Kylie concealer though. So I'm debating picking something up. So let me know down below if you ever picked anything up from KKW and what you thought of it. Norvina tweeted out yesterday that she's thinking of doing a Norvina 2 palette launch for the one year anniversary, or she was thinking about it for the one year anniversary of the Norvina palette. And my first thought was, oh, that would be great. I'm excited. I'm going to sneeze. Oh, guys, I swear to God, summer and spring, I hate, I hate these allergies and bugs and heat and rain just give me fall and give me winter i hate i hate spring and summer <laughs> so anyway i was saying that at first i thought this would be awesome and i was so excited for it but then i realized i have the norvina palette and as someone who doesn't reach for purple that often i think i've used it like three times yeah i need to bring that palette back out like so i don't know i mean i would have to see what the norvina 2 would look like I mean, I feel like ABH has done just about everything neutral at this point, and I'm happy they're getting into more colorful palettes. I've gotten both of the new colorful palettes, the Riviera and the Alyssa Edwards palette. I've got them both right here, actually, and I actually really like both of them. But I want to see what, I mean, what else would they do from here? I'm dying to see, like, an earthy tone, like, green, brown, blue kind of palette. So I don't know. But, I mean, I'm definitely interested. I've picked up just about every ABH palette for a while, so so we'll see. MAC is releasing some more scents or different fragrances of their Fix Plus spray. I have to say, my favorites are, like, the original and the rose-scented one. I love the rose Fix Plus. I just finished up a Fix Plus. Yeah, I actually have enough products to do a Back to MAC, which I need to find time to actually go to a MAC store to do that. But I like the rose... I wasn't really a huge fan of the other fragrances, and these are all kind of like fruit scented, so I don't think I'm going to get any of these because it's very hit or miss when it comes to like fruit and vegetable scents. Like I picked up the cucumber spray from Wet n Wild, and while it's a good setting spray, it smells horrendous for like the first 30 seconds. Thankfully it dissipates, but Jesus Christ, it smells horrible. So that's turned me off a lot of stuff that's like that kind of scent. Uh, I know Smashbox came out last summer with different scents too, and I tried it in an Ulta, and I regretted my decision immediately because I sprayed it on my face. I think it was the green one, 
Oh my god, if it smelled like someone punched me in the face with kale, and not in a good way, like... <laughs> So I won't try out any of these other scents, but I, I do still really like Fix Plus. So I would pick up another Fix Plus once I go through the rest of my setting spreads, because I have quite a few setting spreads to work through. I am so excited for this, because especially after how the Certify Affinity 2 palette didn't work for me, uh, Blush Tribe showed this new palette. This is the Layla 2, and it's all yellows and greens, and it looks gorgeous and from what I saw I think they're also bundling in a glitter when you purchase this I've already pre-ordered my palette so I got on yesterday or the day before and I pre-ordered it and it, I think they start shipping July 31st yeah July 31st so I'll probably get mine early August second week of August I would love to do you know a video on this I'm so excited the packaging is gorgeous the shades look gorgeous and I think it's so cute that they're including like a, a glitter or a shimmer extra whenever you pre-order this I, I, I can't wait I can't wait so I kind of just ignored the hype around the Junko sponge it's basically a beauty blender but it's like a different texture like it's a fuzzy kind of texture and they're doing the same thing beauty blender does where they just come out with different colors i haven't tried this out i've been in love with my one dollar sponges from shop miss a for months now so i haven't felt the need to go out and get something else especially because i have no idea how much this cost i think i'm just actually going to go online and buy some more shop miss a sponges because they're a dollar and they're awesome i've had mine the ones i have now i've had for i think think a couple months now so I should replace them and I'm fine replacing them because they're a dollar each like I think it's probably best to keep them maybe is it do you keep sponges like the same amount of time you keep like eye products like every three months do you replace them because I wash mine regularly but I it, it kind of varies how long I actually keep them before I replace them so they're all still holding up pretty well I think a couple of them actually got stained with foundation because I waited a bit before I washed them but I don't know how long do you keep sponges for? Okay, so I literally just talked about Junko, and in the space of like four trend mood posts, they have the new yellow color and the new purple color. Like, guys, seriously, if you've. I don't understand the whole thing about like different colors and how that's like an exciting new release. Like, it's just a color, it's the exact same product. So I don't know why everyone was losing their mind over the Kylie and Coco, uh, whatever, collab. I think I talked about this last time. But, like, it's released since then, and everyone was, like, so excited, and they were retweeting all of this stuff. And I'm like, guys, look at this. <laughs> Just, I don't get it. <sighs> okay, so I said I wasn't going to address this again ever since... I did a weekly wow, I'm pretty sure last summer, about Tati and Halo Beauty. Halo Beauty is releasing now a new his and her daily multi-body and brain booster. Now I'm just going to read what they actually describe this product as first before I rip it to shreds. Expertly designed for both men and women, our His and Her Daily Multivitamin is your complete body and brain care package. A multifaceted multivitamin that supports your mental acuity, eye health, bone health, heart health, and more. Created to harmonize with human complexity and formulated to perfectly pair with their original hair skin nails booster or kiwi seed booster. Okay. So, I'm not hating against all vitamins. Certainly, if you've talked to your physician, if you talk to your doctor, and they recommend adding in certain vitamins, yes, those are fine. They're definitely helpful. But when it comes into this world of designer vitamins, which I cannot believe I just said that phrase, fuck me. Designer vitamins are all, for the most part, and I'm being nice there. They're all bullshit. They really are. They're charging you a lot of money for basically what you can get cheaper for that one product or uh, supplement by itself. But they're charging you more because they can. They're trying to make 
it a luxurious experience. Just the same way you've got like drugstore makeup, middle end makeup, high end makeup, luxury makeup. They're doing the same thing with vitamins. So I'm going to put it this way. If anything is actually effective, you can most likely get it for cheaper than this. And make sure you talk to your doctor first. Don't just start taking vitamins. Make sure you talk to a physician because you really don't know how this is really going to affect you. So for the most part, if it is an actual effective product, you can get it for cheaper or you could get a, a prescription for it. If it's not an effective product, it's just fancy packaging and you're going to pee it all out. Who knows? I really didn't like the fact that she hyped up her own brand only to come out with vitamins. Hair, skin, and nail vitamins where the main uh, ingredient was biotin, which you can buy at Costco for a third of the price. But not only that, instead of actually expanding the brand, because I kind of thought, okay, fine, vitamins are going to be your first product, and then you'll expand. You'll do skincare. You'll do makeup. No. They're doubling down, and they're coming out with more vitamins, and they're specifically stating that they pair well with their other vitamins. So at the end of the day, how much do they want you spending to take their BS vitamins every day? These are like $30, $40 a bottle. They want you to get the brain booster, which is bullshit. They want you to get the brain booster and the hair, skin, and nails, and they want you to take them both daily. Like, I can't. I can't. I kind of thought, like, you know what? Yeah, the vitamins, they start out with vitamins because they wanted to be different. They definitely got, like, a splash out of that because it was different. But, Jesus, how many vitamins do they come out with? I can't. She's basically the U-Tooth Gwyneth Paltrow at this point. I just, <laughs> I can't. And that might, that might be even giving her too much credit. So needless to say, I'm not going to be looking at these. I'm definitely not going to be buying anything. And I won't buy anything from Tati because I left the door open. I said, you know what? If she comes out with skincare, I'd probably like look into it. Came out with makeup, I might look into it. But no, I can't. I can't support this shit. The next post that I see is from Kaur. And this is a highlighter palette, which I would not have guessed from this. They came out with another palette a bit ago. It's the same packaging where it's like shaped like a K. Uh, but looking at this, I wouldn't have pegged it for a highlighter palette. It looks like a pressed glitter palette. And this is $49. Fuck you. I'm sorry. <laughs> Jesus Christ. You know why it's $49 too? Oh my God. It's because it has a glitter filled brush. A mirror. And Keisha Kaor's autograph inside. That's why it's $49. <laughs> so it looks like a new collab that's only available at Nordstrom is with Lancome and uh, Ch Chiara Ferragini. I think she's a model and has a clothing line. That's what it looks like anyway. She did a collab with Lancome and it's like this big palette and a couple of like lip glosses it looks like and a mascara and some lip tints. Um, this palette worries me. It always worries me when you have like cream and powder products really close to each other and you have no separation between them, which is what this is. You see like there's some lip products, you've got eyeshadows, you've got a blush, you've got highlighters, and it's all hella overpriced. The palette is $55. The mascara is $28. The liquid lipsticks are $26, and the lip glosses are $30. Screw you. No. No, no, no. Ooh, okay. So, Pat McGrath is coming out with a full line of complexion products. Uh, a foundation, I think a concealer, setting powders, brushes, the works. I have to say, I am incredibly interested. <laughs> I'm curious. I, I'm not going to buy this right out of the gate. I kind of want to really get like a, a nice size sample of this foundation. Because I'm not really sure. It's supposed to be a satin finish, sheer to medium coverage. Yeah, okay. Um, but I'm I'm curious. I'm curious. There's also going to be a primer, but the primer is 60 bucks. I don't know about that. For that much money, I would just rebuy the Tatcha Silk Canvas because I loved that to death, but I didn't want to keep rebuying it at that price. So, 
So I have to say, I am interested in this. I don't know if any of the face powders would work for me. It goes from like a white to a golden brown, which I could probably use the white if I'm being honest. I'm pale as hell right now, but I don't know if any of those would really work for me. I do, I really want to try out this foundation though, as a sample. I feel like BH Cosmetics has had a couple of new releases that have just gone like right over my head and totally missed out on them. This one caught my eye because it's another one of their like baked palettes. This is called the Stellar Collection. And they said, so the Trend Mood says that this is a new formula. So I know, okay. Their first, the first baked formula that I tried out was in like their galaxy collection it was this palette that had a bunch of different shades that looked like different planets and like stars which is really cool looking it looked really pretty but they really didn't perform that well they didn't really go onto the eye well they didn't last well i decluttered that a while ago i then got their zodiac palettes their zodiac palettes do have the baked formula in them and those are awesome i love those they last really well they're blinding they apply well with a finger or a brush i like those I don't know why they would mess with something that they oh, it's already good. So I have no idea what this new baked formula is going to look like, is going to perform like. But I have to say, while I kind of like the idea of this palette, I like the way that the shadows are arranged. Even though they're not uh, like consistent, it looks like it, it fits the theme really well. And I got to commend them for that. It looks really nice. And I like that the bigger shades can be used as like highlights or blush which i think they were going for but knowing my experience with their first kind of galaxy palette and how it didn't perform well and how i didn't reach for it i don't know why i would get this one i, I have to say i'm curious about their baked formula but if they changed anything from the zodiac palettes then they're nuts because that formula was perfect and it worked really well and i hope i just really hope it didn't get any worse yeah, here we go. So BH Cosmetics came out with a collab with Tina Young, and the palette idea is kind of cute. You've got like a face side, or you've got like a bronzer, some blushes, and then you've got eyeshadows. It's very summer. It does look really summer, and if I were in the market for another summer palette, but quite honestly, there's just nothing that's really jumping out at me about this. Like, I know they're decent with their shadows, they're decent with their face products, I don't know. I like I feel like I'm looking at this and while it's pretty, I don't need it. Speaking of what you don't need, this entire box of ColourPop lippy sticks. This is kind of ridiculous and by kind of ridiculous, I mean incredibly. Looking at the shades in here. <laughs> I really don't think there's a reason you would need all of these unless you were a working makeup artist. Like, look, this looks like a Morphe palette of lipsticks. That's what this looks like. There are very small differences in between each shade where it's almost negligible, and you could get the same effect with a third of the products in here. And they're going to sell you all of these lippy sticks. Uh, oh, my God. And it's like $100. It's $150. <laughs> no. Don't buy this. Please don't buy this. You're going to have way too many lippy sticks. You're never going to use them all before they expire. And a lot of these are the same shades. They're too similar. Don't. Oh my god. So Tarte came out with this new palette and it's definitely, I think, better than like the kind of neutral whatever palettes they keep going for recently. I haven't bought from Tarte since their Shape Tape fiasco because I mean, if you don't know, I talked about it a bit ago. But when that first foundation shade range launched, uh, they were very condescending to people about the shade range, and they came out with this horrible interview where they said, oh yeah, of course we only have light shades right now, because everyone's pale right now. And then later on, you know, in the summer, when everyone tans, we'll come out with the darker shades then. Which was the most tone deaf thing I think I've ever heard a brand really say. So I have not bought from Tarte since then. Since my last video talking about toxicity in the beauty community, I talked about possibly revisiting Tarte and seeing how they've done since then. If they're better, if they're worse, who knows? Because a lot of people have 
either just glossed over that completely or have forgiven them for that and I'm, I'm now like purchasing from the brand again so I, I'm thinking about revisiting them and doing that and along those lines my grandmother who actually gets her hair done at Ulta like every other month she gets her hair dyed there she went to Ulta this last week and she got a bunch of free samples with her service and a couple of them were tart samples that she gave to me so I actually have a couple of like sample size tart products that were gifted to me one of them being the lipstick I'm actually wearing today this is a very light nude that I'm actually I kind of really like this is the Tardist lip paint and it's in the shade pillow talk so this was actually a big sample that they gave for free. And I also have a sample of the found sealer. So this, I have no idea what shade this is. Looking at it, it's probably going to be too dark for me. But I thought I would test it out and maybe do a video kind of summarizing my thoughts on Tarte as a whole. And whether I should start rebuying from them and whether... Uh, whether we should hold companies like that that aren't really based on a single person where like the fault kind of falls as opposed to like Jaclyn Hill Cosmetics where for the most part everything fell on Jaclyn and the fact that she should have learned from her past mistakes and should have done better with Tarte I don't know who gave that interview I don't know who was running their Instagram at the time you know so it's a lot to take in a lot to think about so let me know what your thoughts are down below because I'm starting to rethink maybe that maybe beauty blender because the same thing happened with beauty blender of their foundation they attacked trend mood and said you put a filter on our photo our shade range isn't that bad and trend mood was like yeah we didn't you gave us this photo like so also like who ran their instagram at the time who was sending those comments we don't really know so that was a really long and roundabout way of me saying that i'm not interested in this new palette in particular but i'm really reconsidering tart like as a brand so I can't remember if I've mentioned this before because I think it's been sneak peeked before but it's only rolling out in stores so far in certain Walgreens. Wet n Wild is doing a collab with Pac-Man. <laughs> I love Pac-Man and I kind of love the idea of what looks like this highlighter palette in the back. Looks like they have some new lipsticks that I'd really be willing to try out because I do love some of the shades in their mega last liquid catsuit line they've got some brushes and what look like some lip balms i think it's an adorable aesthetic i think there is an eyeshadow palette back there which i would be interested in because they have some awesome eyeshadows but i think it's only available in the store i have not seen this anywhere near me it looks like it's av available only in walgreens but they said coming soon online, so I'll keep an eye on the website and maybe they'll be available online and I can look through and pick a few things from there. Okay, so we've been filming for a bit. I'm going to leave it there for this week. Let me know down below, as always, what your thoughts are, especially about Tarte, about Tati, about Halo. There's so much to go over. <laughs> Let me know all your thoughts down below. Thank you guys for watching and I cannot wait to see you in my next video. Bye.